Hi, it's Paul from HowToNetwork.com here on 101labs.net. I don't normally do this, but this is so important I thought I'd actually go through a blog post rather than just let you read it. If you want to read it, you can come to HowToNetwork.com, click on blog and it'll be under the career section or I'll put a link in the description. I do a lot of uh, videos showing you technical IT stuff, how to pass exams, how to have a successful career, how to solve IT problems. So please click on the subscribe button. If you uh, if you enjoy the video, click your thumbs up and there's a bell icon you can click on. We've got full IT courses, many hundreds of hours of full IT training for databases, networking, security and a free Cisco CCNA in 60 days course also. All right, so how to never fail an IT exam again. It's a bold claim, but I reckon if you follow this advice, you can improve your chances of passing. The average global pass rate for most IT exams from CompTIA to Cisco and others is around 50%. Some people take two attempts, three, four. Um, obviously, each time you do that, you're spending around $350 per attempt. Some of the CompTIA exams are even more expensive. So uh, I've actually failed um, IT exams in the past. Our CCIE uh, for I failed the CCNA four times. So there's a lot of it going on. The average is 2.5 times to get through the Cisco CCNA, certainly. So if you go into forums such as Reddit, I just did a screen grab and put loads together, but failed, failed, failed twice, failed Network Plus, failed CCMP. It's a pretty um, devastating experience. Um, it costs a lot of money and it's obviously quite disheartening. My point is for the blog post, people put a lot of money and time into studying. They buy uh, books, video courses, practice exams, lab, sof lab software. They don't put any time into exam strategy and this is where they fall over. So hopefully this won't happen to you. For example, um, Knowing in most IT exams you can't use a calculator, some people post that they failed thinking that they could take one in. So they haven't done their um, their due diligence, should we say. I've got a complete Cisco CCNA exam coaching program on my website for members, um, under courses. Um, it's um, CCNA exam coaching. If you're taking the CCNA, that covers brain training and exam strategy. So, before you start, you need to block off two months of study for most IT exams. So, Cisco CCNA, CompTIA A+, plus, Network+, plus, that kind of thing. Some people do it a lot quicker, some people will take a bit longer, but that's fine. If you've got a big thing coming up, like a wedding, a big milestone birthday that you need to plan for, or travelling, then uh, don't do it at the moment. Just wait till that's uh, finished and then concentrate. The other thing is you need to find around two hours per day. So you need to block off the time. I recommend you do it in two blocks of one hour uh, because after an hour you'll be too tired to study. And um, generally people spend about five hours per day watching telly. So the time can be found. I used to get up an hour early and study at home. I used to drive to work a couple of hours before I was supposed to be at work and studied in a quiet office. During my lunch breaks, I sat in my car in the works car park and studied reading cram guides, doing labs, that kind of thing on a laptop. So it can all be done. The other thing is um, get a copy of the syllabus. It's normally available in PDF or you can copy it off the website and paste it into a spreadsheet. I use Google Spreadsheet. So this is the Cisco CCNA exam syllabus, as it said. This is module one. Um, I think there's five or six main areas for the CCNA. I can't remember. And then you've got subheadings. And then within those subheadings, you've got 1.1a, b, c, d, e, for example. And then you've got the next area. So you're going to break the whole syllabus down into all these sections so you can study it um, in order. I'll come to this later, I think, but just in case, I put next to each um, syllabus item a th two columns, one for my level of theory knowledge and one for my hands-on configuring and troubleshooting. So it won't apply to things like the OSI model, but for example, um, let me something that's hands-on maybe, configuring access points. My theory, I put a six, but my hands-on knowledge, being able to do it, a nine out of ten. Don't attempt the exam until you've got at least a nine in both columns for all of the topics. 
all right, so your daily steps will be do a theory study via your books or videos, whichever you um, have access to, take practice exams every day, do hands-on labs every day, um, don't wait. This is the important one. I see people that have got an exam in a week's time and they decide then to start practice exams and they're going to they're getting 40, 50 percent. Don't wait until the end. So the theory, obviously, and books are the most convenient because you can write notes in them. I think it's important to write a note um, in a book. So I, ge I generally have a printed book, hardback or softback. Um, theory videos, obviously, um, I've got these on howtonetwork.com and there's other um, competitors out there. I recommend you have one main theory book and then a secondary book. The main book I recommend you have printed. The theory book is fine in Kindle. And what will happen is you will learn something in the secondary book that isn't in the primary book. And you can write it in the primary book, a command or a, an idea or a, a way of explaining things. Practice the exams, um, use them as a study tool every day. Don't wait till the end, as I said. This helps transfer the information uh, to a different part of your brain. So it's stored in the shorter to medium term memory, and this helps um, um, kinesthetically, hands on, um, apply the knowledge. So um, hands on labs, um, mo most exams have no practical element. For example, uh, the CompTIA A plus and A plus. There is a what's known as a performance based question for CompTIA, but generally you know, not much. You don't have to do much typing. This is a trap. So you've got no hope of understanding topics such as DHCP if you don't configure them. And obviously, uh, when you um, do a practical scenario or ask a practical question in the exam, you won't actually understand the protocol. So I recommend you do um, hands on labs every day. There's not many places you can do them for exams such as CompTIA, so have a look at 101 Labs on Amazon or the website 101labs.net or make your own up. And what you do is go round and round. You Generally you can follow the um, order in your book or the order in your syllabus and you start at the top, whatever the first items are for the syllabus, and you go all the way down, then you go back up and all the way through, all the way through, all the way through. And eventually your level of knowledge will go from five to six to seven to eight to nine, especially when you're doing the exams and labs also. Study boosters. So these are a few things that will dramatically increase your chances of passing. Audio books, hard to get these for IT. You could uh, read out the book into a microphone like the one I've got here and listen to it when you're driving or on the bus or even at work if you're allowed to have headphones at work. Lab books, as I said, I ended up having to uh, write my own because there was none around. I think there's a few now for CCNA maybe. But if you want, check out the 101 Labs books on uh, Amazon, as I said. Um, there's over 10 in print now for CompTIA, Linux, Python, subnetting, Cisco, etc. Cram guides. Um, write out the main um, commands, the main protocols, the port numbers, the, the things that are important for your exam. Write them out and take this cram guide everywhere with you. You can put it into Word or actually write it in a notebook. I've got a, if you go to Cisco CCNA in 60 days, I think there's a link here actually you can click on maybe on this book here. So come to the blog post, click it, you'll see that I've actually written a cram guide for the students. You need to know your cram guide by heart to be able to write it out from scratch before you take the exam. So do that for any exams. Uh, the final piece of the puzzle is the actual exam. So it's shocking to hear students of, uh, stories of students not knowing the exam process or even knowing where the testing centre is. So they book an exam and it's in a busy city centre. They don't know where the car park is. They don't know where the testing centre is. You'll often find these testing centres are inside a, a multi-storey building and there's multiple offices. On every floor there's multiple um, companies. They're renting different offices within that floor. And it's going to be stressful if you can't find it. And obviously, if you're late, then you're going to fail the exam. The exam, check you understand how long you have and if you're permitted to mark questions. On Microsoft, I haven't taken a Microsoft exam for a while. You could mark questions and go back later and check the answers or, or answer it if you hadn't. Cisco CCNA, you can't do that. In fact, all Cisco exams. Testing centres, make sure you read all the rules and requirements. Generally, you'll need two forms of ID. So you need to take your driving license with you with a photograph or a passport and then a second form of ID. 
Many centres will supply you with an A4 whiteboard and marker, so you can't take any pen or paper in. Uh, the whiteboard even, I've gone in and not been given anything to rub off. I've had to have my own uh, tissue, sheet of tissue in my pocket because they, they just wouldn't give me anything. It's crazy. If you see any of the candidates in the room, obviously you don't speak to them. So after the exam, uh, your score appears on the screen usually. And um, hopefully if you follow this advice and read the blog post, you should um, pass convincingly. So these are my main points. I've only generalised what's on the blog post, so please read the blog post in full. Take my advice. You can put a comment on here. As I said, I've got a full coaching programme if you're doing the Cisco CCNA with all of this in great more detail. I've got five hours of free IT webinars and a 200-page ebook with a lot of the advice I've just given you. If you come to the website, just put your best email address in and um, you can subscribe and get more blog posts and videos like this. So... I hope it helps. You can drop a question under the video if you're watching this on YouTube or if you're on my website, you can leave a post just here and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.